Yeah, hello and welcome to the third part of this After Effects tutorial series about tracking and rotoscoping tips. And the clip that we are using in this tutorial series is the following here. And as you can see, we replace the sign that uh, you can see there. And what we've did so far is in the first part, we took our original footage and have placed this new insert on top and made sure that it tracks uh, properly. Now in the second part we made sure that also this truck that goes in front of it nicely is put back in front of it with all the motion blur. And now the only problems that are left for this third part is if you look closely at the hands of these boys and compare this with the original footage, you can see here they are obviously in front of the sign and in what we have so far they are hidden by the new insert. So what we need to do is to take our foreground, uh, our original layer put it on top of everything else and now we need to mask out those hands that this layer just consists of the hands. So let's just name this hands. Um, many people might think it would be a good idea to try to luma key this because this is just white here so maybe we can find proper edges by just doing a luma key. I find another technique uh, most of the time uh, working better. And this is great when you have like a clearly visible edge like here in front of the white, it's easy to to see the uh, edge of the the fingers. It doesn't really need to be a hard edge. It can also be a soft one. And now I go to the very first frame and draw a really ma rough mask around the hands that are visible. After the first hand, I set the mask mode to none in order to be able to set the second mask. And same for the third one. Now I want to track all those masks, so I select them all three, right click and say track mask. And since it really doesn't need to be very accurate, it's totally sufficient to track here just the position and rotation. There's not much scale going on anyway. I set the third mask also to none, such that we can better see what is going on. And start our track again with all three masks selected. You can see that in a pretty reasonable speed it follows all those hands. And again the masks are not really accurate, but accurate enough for what we need. You can also track with Mocha if you prefer this, and probably Mocha is a bit more accurate when it comes to motion blur. Okay, now the car is in front of it, so it does not make sense to continue tracking there. And we go to the frame, like to the first frame where all three hands are visible again. And make sure that all masks are where they should be. I first track a few frames backwards and now these two masks from the boy a few frames backwards until they disappear which is here already here and now I continue tracking all three masks to the right until the end of the composition. Okay now we can set the mask mode of all these three masks to add and if I disable the visibility of the mask, you can see what we get is, of course, just a pretty rough, disappointing uh, mask shape here. But now what you can do to improve this mask is to apply the refine soft matte effect to this layer. And you can see that even with the standard settings already, the result looks pretty good. Now what this effect is actually doing is it looks at the alpha channel, so at the edges of the layer, and you can see these edges if you here enable view edge region. And in these regions it looks for plausible edges that it thinks here the edge of my layer actually should be. And it's able to properly identify the hands here, the, like the edge between the hands and the layer. And so this means this turns really poor rotoscoping in a pretty much accurate one. Now you can play with these parameters here, smoothness, feather and so on, but usually already in the standard settings uh, it looks pretty good. Now you can see the only subtle problem that we might have is here this region where it does not really find the corner and this is probably if we previously edge region again because this part is not in the region that is considered yeah, so we can do this by adding an additional edge. You can see if we make this here larger, the region that is considered gets also larger. And now you can see that also here you've got a pretty 
accurate result. Other things that you sometimes need to do is if you see some flickering in the generated masks, then you might also need to turn on the shatter reduction, yeah, which you can often just set to smoother. And now let's take a look at our final result. So it looks pretty good, except for these very few last frames here before the car comes. And this is because of this smoother setting, which says I try to make this hand here look the same or pretty similar to the next frame that is coming. You can see the next frame that is coming looks like this or one of the next frames. So in order to smooth this, it tries to hide the hand here, here already. If you run into these kinds of issues, either you can turn off the smoothing. Yeah. Now you can see we don't have the problem anymore. If you still need the smoothing because this is too much flickering for you, then you can also keyframe this value. Yeah. Let's say we keep it on until this point where it still looks okay. Keyframe. And on the next frame where we have our problem, we just turn it off. Okay. So that's it for this final part of the tutorial series. You learned that it's really easy to generate some rotoscopings by first doing a really rough track with either the mask tracker or also with Mocha or any other tracking method or rotoscoping method of your choice and then refining your rotoscoping with the refine soft matte effect which takes your rough rotoscoping and turns it into a way more exact one by trying to find edges in the region that you've rotoscoped. Okay, that's it for this tutorial series. If you want to know more about these topics and After Effects on Marmo World, we've got lots of other tutorials. Please check them out. In particular, related to this one is the Advanced Screen Insertion Tutorial, which gives you some more ideas what to think about when you do these kinds of insertions of elements in your scene. Again, I'm Matthias for MarmoWorld.com. Thanks again to Artbeats for providing the footage we used in this tutorial, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.